hit record. There we go. <laughs> um, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. That's cool. Do you want to wait a little bit? Do you think anyone else is coming? Maybe we'll give it another three minutes. We'll start at 1210 then. Okay, that's cool with me. for people like because we all need to be seen. And I really was um, drawn already to working with women. And, uh, and so this just took that um, desire further. So uh, in the process, I was in Florida at the time and I moved to Chicago because that's where my kid was. And um, so I, uh, was working for my company, which was a high-end gym called Equinox. And someone walked in and needed a membership and I chatted with her and she was an acupuncturist. And I don't know if you all know Giselle Wasfi. She's super successful. She's in the West Loop right now and uh, has been mentioned um, globally for her work. She, um, if any of you guys want to talk to someone else, Giselle would be a great person to have on your, on these talks. Anyway, um, so I, she wanted to use me as a demo because she was a new, uh, newly graduated um, acupuncturist. And so she was just trying to drum up some business. So she did and totally appealed to my vanity, stuck a ton of needles in my face. And, um, and then I started to see her regularly and my life completely shifted. And so at that moment, or during that process rather, I realized that acupuncture was how I was gonna make the difference for women primarily, but in the world. Um, so fast forward to a bunch of events that led to me um, going to check out PCOM and within four months, I was an acupuncture student. So. Um, and then everything changed. Um, I still work a lot with women, women are my jam, but I'm all about the divine feminine, but then I discovered the divine masculine. So now I've worked with some really cool men as well. Um, and so uh, again, fast forward through school because nobody wants to stay in those four years forever. And uh, I ended up working for a short time at one place in Chicago and eventually ended up at Aligned Modern Health. So um, it was a great experience for me because I got my hands on a lot of people in a short amount of time. So I had a pretty busy uh, practice at Aligned in Lincoln Square. And, um, and that's, that's kind of like how the whole, the whole thing kind of like wrapped up as far as like getting started. Um, my, <laughs> oh, my PCOM experience as far as the, I didn't really have much of a choice as to which program I was in. We didn't have the doctorate program then. I started actually in massage and acupuncture and over a couple of semesters realized that I just wanted to focus on one thing. Um, one person said to me, do you want to be good at a few things or an expert at one? And I chose an expert at one. Um, although I've kind of reversed that now, but that's okay. <laughs> so, um, so I didn't really have the choice of the doctorate. The doctorate came about probably three quarter, I don't know, Ryan, right? Three quarters of the way through my, um, uh, my program, getting the master's. And so I opted out. Well, I didn't really fully opt out at the time. It was, they weren't uh, fully organized yet in how they were going to present that. So I'm actually in the doctorate now and I will graduate in August if everything goes according to plan. So 
So I'll be happy to have that under my belt. I think having the doctorate is really important these days um, because there are not a lot of us, it seems like there are in our world, but out in the world of acupuncturists, there's not a lot of us out there. And so it's really gonna, um, it's really gonna, I think, give us a leg up. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to teach. It gives you the opportunity to do things like what Ryan is doing um, and um, at the VA. And also uh, it does, I, I agree with you 100%, Ryan. It helps to elevate our profession. It, it allows us to be seen as physicians as opposed to uh, people who work in a spa. So nothing wrong with working in a spa, but having that um, in the medical indus industry is really, really important. I think the medical profession, um, it also allows us to charge a little bit more, which is great. So, um, so that's kind of, uh, I mean, that's the, I came into the master's, I left with the master's and now I'm getting the doctorate. And I think that, you know, that's um, super important um, for us to have. So, um, ooh, the most challenging thing after I graduated other than finding my energy again, uh, which takes a really long time. So the end of my um, graduate career, I guess we would say, I was seeing Elaine Bozar for acupuncture at the time and I was exhausted. And so one day she said to me, I'm so sorry, we didn't tell you we were gonna take all of your kidney in. And then two weeks later, I went back and she said, I'm so sorry. We also didn't tell you we were going to take your kidney young. So, uh, and they did. Um, and so it took me, uh, I think, until COVID to finally get my energy back. Um, so I did get to sleep for the first couple months of that, which was great. Um, but I think what I would say is to, I mean, I kind of kid around about it, but being exhausted makes you... Um, less, I think, less aware as a practitioner and also as a human. <laughs> so I think that we really need to guard our energy, which is really, really hard in, um, in the program that you guys are in. And I would say lots of herbs, lots of, yeah, exactly, Vishali, um, lots of herbs, lots of um, acupuncture, and uh, rest as much as you can. On your breaks, if you can rest, rest. Um, I would say, even if you need to stretch out your time, I was very conscious of a few other parameters in my life at the time that were press, kind of pressuring me to speed up the process of graduation. Had I to do it over again, I would have done one more semester um, so that my last semester wasn't as jam-packed as it was and I wasn't as exhausted. Um, I was very conscious of my age and needing to get back out into the world to actually like do a thing before I couldn't do any things. And so I would say that I would guard my energy if I was you guys, because in the long run, it will serve you well. Um, rest as much as you can, have a personal life if it's at all possible. It's usually not possible, um, but those things are, are really important. I think Ryan was really good at that. I was not so good at that. Um, so after graduation, I kind of had an inkling of where I was going to work. I had a little bit of a hiccup. Um, I was in a relationship. It was long distance. Um, it was 2016 going into 2017. And what I didn't know is that we were on the different political sides. So I actually went to a women's march and came back and the person that I was with didn't speak to me for a couple of days and I ended up back in Chicago. So that put a little bit of a delay in getting started. I came back to work for a company, but um, was pretty happy to go work at Aligned about a month or two later. I think the most um, difficult thing other than my personal life at that time was just getting through boards. And so I would say, if you can do boards in your, that's I think when I talk about making a change in my last semester, I think I would have taken an extra term and then also 
done boards while I was in school, if I could, or at least one or two of them get them under my belt. You're more in the in the mindset of your studies at that point. And once you get out back out in the world, other things are gonna kind of come in. So if you can take your boards or a part of some of them while you're in school, I would definitely do that. It also gives you a leg up and a head start on, on getting a job. Because <clears throat> Illinois at the time took a really long time. Once I was done boards and everything was, um, was in place, I still waited three months to get my license. So, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's. You know, then take your boards as soon and after and um, know that it's gonna probably take a little bit of time um, to get your license and just make a plan for that is, is that what I would say. Um, but after graduation, that was, that was really the hardest thing. Um, I would say, um, oh, business model and my steps to getting started. I called Lamia and said, can I work for online? <laughs> so that, I mean, I, that, as far as that, that's how I, I really got started. And again, it was a good opportunity to get my hands on a lot of people. I would say there's a lot of good that came out of working for that company, but that was practically probably one of the best things that, um, that could have happened. You know, the whole thing about feeling 10,000 pulses, when you're seeing 50 people a week, you're gonna get to that 10,000 pulses a lot more quickly than you are if you're seeing 20 people a week. And the more people you see, the better you get, the better you get at reading pulses, the better you get at all of the diagnostics. And also the more your, your, um, your energy, um, I guess I would say your energy becomes really fine tuned when you're able to see a lot of people. One of the things that's happened to me here now that I'm in Colorado is I see fewer people and I don't have the same, um, my energy is the same, but I don't have the same physical um, reaction to it. So um, I would say that, uh, that that is one of the most important things that, um, that happened to me over the course of my time um, at Align. So um, getting your hands on a lot of people is, is important. Um, and also having, I don't know that I have a business model, but I would say that I'm uh, approachable and that um, my intake is, is, is not, my intake is not, uh, is, is not, you know, one thing after the other. My intake is like a conversation. And in conversation, you're able to get to know your people and your patients a little bit differently. And that in the long run is going to stand you in good stead. So if you're able to have just a conversation back and forth, your intake is going to be natural, it's going to be organic, and you're also going to get a lot more information. Uh, you are great, Christy. I loved having you as my assistant. That was awesome. Um, so yeah, and, and that's, I, I think that's, that comes a little bit from my, my sales background um, as well. And that's how I sold. So caring about the person in front of you is going to go a long way to them wanting to come back to you. And another thing, um, I don't think Marshall is still teaching there. But one thing that he taught me was very early on when I was really nervous in clinic was um, to not worry if I chose the wrong point because no matter what, people were gonna leave feeling better. And acupuncture just does that like naturally without you doing anything else. And so if you make a wrong point, your patient's gonna have no idea. And so not that you want to choose incorrectly, but kind of give yourself a bit a bit of grace and a, and a bit of, um, yeah, he is awesome. Um, a bit of grace and a bit of, um, of just self-love. And, you know, if you forget a point, just if you, if you think, oh, I should have done this point instead of that point, it's fine, you can do it next time. And 
you know, um, just having some grace with yourself is also really important. And when you're in conversation, just sit there and love the person and they're going to respond to that. So I feel like that's one of the most important things. Probably the thing that's made me most, most successful is, is just my being open to people and non-judgmental as well. So um, as far as, so I left Aligned uh, during COVID. Um, I had known for quite some time that I wanted to change how my life looked. Um, I, I'm very happy here in Colorado. It's starting to clear up a little bit outside. Normally it's sunny. I think we have something between 275 and 300 sunny days a year. And that's really important to me. Sorry, you guys, I know what your weekend's been like um, because I used to live it. I remember the minus 51 degree day, January 30th, 2018 or 2019, 2019, um, right? Horrible. Anyway, sorry. Uh, so it's beautiful here. I really wanted to live in a place where um, where I was able to be outside a lot, where I could choose an active lifestyle very easily and um, where the sun shone most of the time. So I moved to Colorado, had a split second where I was gonna go to San Diego, but I also have a couple of friends here. Uh, one of the most important friendships I have is with a guy who's a functional medicine doctor. Um, I've known him for a, probably 25 years. We knew each other when I was on the East Coast. Um, and then he made his way out here probably 10 years ago or so and as a chiropractor. And then he had um, an injury and he ended up not being able to use his shoulders anymore. So he now is a functional medicine doctor and he's pretty brilliant. So most of my patients have come from him here uh, because I also, as I said, moved during COVID and so really hard to build a business when no one's going outside. So uh, so since I've been here, um, I have also uh, done a course in coaching and a course in hypnotherapy. And hypnotherapy is super, super powerful. Um, and that's what I was talking about when I said I decided to end up mixing some modalities. So now being able to do acupuncture to comfortably lead somebody through a meditation, which I wasn't really comfortable with before, and also, or I was, I should say, or also lead them through hypnotherapy is a, the most powerful combination that I can imagine at this point. So things that I'm super interested in are primarily emotional health um, and spiritual health and, um, I do still love doing women's health and fertility. I haven't done a lot of fertility out here, although at one point it aligned, I think I had 15 pregnant ladies and that was pretty exciting. Um, so especially for someone who didn't really specialize in fertility, but I do love uh, women's health. There's nothing quite like getting a text from someone saying, hey, no cramps this, this month, I love you. That's a great feeling. Um, so, uh, and then when you meet a baby that you helped make, that's pretty cool too. So um, sadly, like I think five babies of, my, of, of mine, five of my babies <laughs> were born after I left. So I've only seen pictures of them. So someday I'll meet them. Um, oh, Charles, I'm in, um, I'm in Louisville, which is just outside of Boulder. Um, I'm <laughs> doing a paper right now for one of my classes and I researched Louisville a little bit more and we've been voted in the last 10 years, four of the times either top one or two places to live in the country. So it's a really super small town feel. It's got some hist history to it and, um, and, and is just really well run. So um, I, love, I love where I live right now. Um, plus I have a really cute apartment. Um, so uh, yeah, so I so now I do some virtual. Um, I combine the idea of East Asian medicine with spiritual coaching, transformational coaching. I'm going to start working with someone as a relationship coach. We'll see how that goes since I'm single. 
Um, but, uh, but uh, and then I also do a lot of hypnotherapy now, both virtually and with my patients. So it's a great combo. Using the needles and the hypnotherapy to speak to the body and the unconscious mind is just mind blowing. Um, I have plans um, for when people can maybe come back uh, to being around each other again, um, to do adventure weekends where we include hiking, yoga, nutrition, um, along with the ability to use acupuncture and hypnotherapy to help people release their fears and limitations, hike to the top of a mountain, do the release, come back down and do an alignment after. So um, I'm really excited about the future uh, and just want to get through this crazy time. I also have a real heart for working with people post COVID because I know there's going to be a lot of um, PTSD uh, for for both of our both our healthcare workers and frontline folks, but also just the general public. We're definitely going to have a crisis and you guys are going to be really important in that too. There's a lot of um, science to back up the long-term effects of short-term, not, well, not short-term, but shorter-term anxiety and depression and what it does in the body. So um, polyvagal theory and things like that come into play with that. Um, so that's kind of my like little story. Um, is there anything else I wanted to say? Oh yeah, boring stuff, billing system, insurance. Um, I, use, uh, I use the Jane app for my, um, my, my electronic records. And, um, and I have, I don't take insurance. I do offer packages. I take credit cards so I can do an FSA or HSA card or super bill, which I offer to people. I've only lost one person because of insurance. So, and she may still come back. Um, I think it's a lot of work. It's been suggested to me here Again, I've only lost one person. I do packages. My packages are reasonable. Um, I recently modified it so that everything that I do is it's like you, if you want to work with me, here's the cost per hour, um, whether it's hypnotherapy, whether it's, uh, um, you know, acupuncture. I don't do an a la carte. I do charge a little bit more when I do facial rejuvenation. Um, because I tend to try to sell those in packages. Um, I prefer packages anyway. It's nice to get a check for a thousand bucks. Um, and my, yeah, I guess my, my specialty is, like I said, is mostly the psycho-emotional is my, is my jam. I believe that, um, I believe that we've been existing under rules based on greed and power and control for hundreds or thousands of years. And, and it's time to make some new rules. So that's really what I'm hoping to help my patients do and what I plan to do myself. So questions, comments? Oh, Charles, yeah, um, I really, I guess my approach is, my approach is a five element approach um, using TCM. So I am looking to begin to study under Elaine Duncan, um, Elaine with an A, I'll type her name in. She's pretty awesome. Um, uh, she's um, written a book called The Tao of Trauma and works with um, somatic experiencing. And she comes with uh, from a five element approach to anxiety, grief, pain, which I think um, emotional pain, which I think is really exciting. And, and um, I've been to a couple of her uh, webinars and unfortunately COVID took her out of the, um, she, she has a series, it's a one year series, five different weekends, each weekend devoted to an element and it's association with trauma. 
And so it's a it's a great book. She's amazing. Um, I think it's integrative. Oh, integrative works. Maybe I'll I'll double check that and get back to you guys on that. Um, I think that's her her website. Um, but anyway, um, so she's awesome. Um, yes, integrative. I knew that I was missing word. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, so uh, I also am super interested in um, the eight extras. I've used them. Um, I've used them a lot for. Uh, women in trauma. Um, I've used them a lot for women in general. Um, I love the Chong so much. And I love the Run channel. It's my favorite channel of all. Anyone who's had acupuncture from me knows that. <laughs> um, so I, uh, um, those are, yeah, those are my two faves. But I do, uh, again, um, let's see what's Yvonne Fuller. Yvonne Fuller has written a book um, on the eight extras, psycho, psycho emotional. Alyssa, you can look that up and find it for me. Psycho, psycho emotional uh, working with the eight extras, something along those lines. I have all these books in my apartment. I just don't know what the names are. Um, so anyway, uh, those are those are um, people who are who have written some books that are helpful um, for for using those channels. So. Other questions? I have a question. Hi, Joni. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? Your face. I miss you too. Um, do you, well, two questions. So do you work with herbs still and, or uh, now that she gets doctorate and how has that been for you? Um, and any like, pro, I guess like, yeah, just anything you may make yourself mm. and sell. And then the other one would be, are you willing to share your contact information with us if we would like to get in touch with you after this? Yes. And it's so good to see you. <laughs> so this is my, oops, typing, still typing. Okay, here we go. Um, so my company is Desert Rose Life because I think that we should be practicing a lifestyle as opposed to just a medicine. Um, it's all about intentional living. Um, so anyway, um, oh, hypnotherapy. So um I think this is how you spell her last name. So Priya, uh, Priya Laki is a person that I met um, through, uh, well, those of you who know me a little bit know that I went to Bali a couple years ago and I met her on that trip or because of that trip. She wasn't on it, but we did do a retreat together in Costa Rica um, in November of 2019. 2019 was a great travel year. Um, but Priya is a, a shaman and a healer. So she taught a logically based hypnotherapy class with a spin of spirituality, which was perfect for me. And you also you get certified by her, but you also get certified by the American Hypnotherapy Association. So I'm happy to give anybody her info. She's about to do a class. Um, I'm not sure when it's starting, I think sometime this month and I, she may still have spots left, but um, it's far more reasonable than going to some other people. So not cheap, but worthwhile. Yes, that is the other one. Um, thank you. Um, so, and Yvonne actually has trained with Jeffrey UN. So, um, so it's, it's, it's a real, and it's an easily, it's an easy read. So, I mean, written like a conversation, which is how I like things. Um, so did I fully, oh, uh, oh, um, herbs. Thanks, Christy, <laughs> get lost. Um, so I do work with herbs. Uh, I work with herbs a lot with fertility. Um, I, herbs was never my favorite in school and I believe in the power of acupuncture a lot. Um, I like to use herbs as a way to um, supplement what we do. And also if I'm not able to see someone as frequently, I'll, I'll use herbs. I am not 
I am first an acupuncturist and second an herbalist. So, um, but I really love them for what they do. Like Alyssa can attest to that. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. <laughs> That's awesome, Liz. Yeah, um, buy them. <laughs> They're really good. The Tao of Trauma is amazing. So, so yeah, so, so the answer is yes, I work with herbs. Um, it's been interesting because having taken almost a year uh, since I left Aligned, it, it Aligned at first, the herb thing was a, a little nebulous. So, um, uh, and after a while it was better, um, but I really feel like my herbal skills were lacking for a long time until I started using them here again and kind of uh, started delving into different uh, formulas that we weren't necessarily made aware of when we were in school and, and things like that for, um, for, my, for my patients here. So um, yeah, any other questions? Oh, um, my, Victoria, my uh, protocol is a little probably more unusual. Um, again, I really like the REN channel. And I think that when we align the chakras, we can do a lot. And what's really kind of fun is to, when I started working with the chakras was actually to take a look at the points and their, their spiritual meaning and their actual meaning. Um, I love, it's a little bit higher up on the body than, um, than the root chakra, but I love using REN4 because that's the source of our original chi. And so once I started doing that, um, I, uh, I really, I got so much success. People were finding their voice, they were finding their own power, um, they were finding clarity in a new way. They were um, letting go of fears. And so I really love using the REN channel. Um, and I will do REN 4, 6, 12, 17, 22, yin tang, and do 20. And it's and then I usually do heart seven and kidney three with that. So those are that's that's my absolute favorite <laughs> uh, treatment to do on anyone. Um, I also like to do uh, some points where I'm connecting uh, like the lung with the kidney channel and things like that. But my favorite uh, treatment is, is to, to use that, uh, that treatment on the red channel. Um, oh yeah. That's yeah, I, it has, it's so, it's so powerful. And I, it's a thing that I ran it by Eric Baker after I um, started using it a lot. Uh, Eric and I are still friendly and chat frequently. So someday I'll be on his podcast. Um, we've been talking about it for over a year. So I'm not sure when that will happen. But, um, but Eric, uh, when I let him know what I was doing, he was like, do you know that's an ancient treatment? And I was like, no, I just made it up. So, um, so uh, yeah, so I really, really like using that that protocol. It's great. Um, oh, so Vishali, that's a really good question, working solo and building a business. You know, I came here at a really difficult time. <laughs> so um, I am in a space right now that I rented sight unseen. And it is a little bit dark for my taste. So I'm about to start in March um, at renting at a new space. It's actually a co-working uh, uh, facility for um, holistic healthcare workers. So there's coaches there, there's uh, massage therapy, and then there's also um, a couple of acupuncturists. So I'm pretty excited um, to, uh, to get there because it's super light and bright and the people are more online with my, yeah, yeah, exactly, much better energy. Um, so where I am now is okay. Um, the people are nice. Um, I was told that there would be opportunity for, um, you know, for referrals back and forth and that hasn't happened. So I've just built everything on my own through, um, through word of mouth and through my friend who's the FM. 
Um, and, uh, and I would say even the word of mouth has come because of um, people that he's, he sent me. So, and then I do also still work with some people that I knew in Chicago virtually, and they have also sent me people. I work with a girl who's now in Seattle and her mom is here in Denver. So, so there's a little bit of referral going that way as well. And I expect things to really change in the next few months. Um, a, because of being in this new space. Um, I'm also looking for a space in closer to Denver. Um, Denver people don't like to go to Boulder. And so I'm um, looking for a space there and I'm gonna see a space that I'm thinking of at the end of next week. Um, and so had a meeting with somebody yesterday about that. So spending two days in one area and two days in another is gonna be, I think, a better way to grow. Um, a lot of people that I have friends, um, most of their friends are in the Denver area and they don't wanna drive up to Boulder, but I really like it up here. So um, so that's the combo that's, that's moving forward. I just really have started to grow the acupuncture. It took a little bit of time so, um, but now it's starting to take off, so that's good. Uh, marketing ideas. Um, oh, I'm not a great marketer, <laughs> um, but you know, my plan is actually um, writing a lot of papers this week, but my plan after this week is to actually get on Clubhouse more, the new, um, the new platform. Um, so, and there's a lot of really good marketing opportunities there. Um, super interesting. It's, I don't know if you guys know about Clubhouse. Um, it is a platform and it's, it's like it has rooms and, and it's all about conversation. Um, and so what's kind of cool is there's people from all over the world on it. Um, and I have a really good friend who does a lot of marketing for like people on The Voice. I met him when I was in Bali um, and he is yelling at me to get on that platform. Um, he's already closed like $60,000 in sales or something from it. So I guess it's worthwhile. There's also a couple of people in my, um, in one of my doctorate classes um, who are really familiar with more of an online promotion of your business. And so uh, we're kind of developing something with Clubhouse also. So that's, um, that's honestly, I feel like I'm in the right area for marketing, especially when I do my adventure weekends. Um, and I'll start with, you know, there are people definitely in Chicago who want to come out. Um, and I think that's just gonna, that's just gonna grow. I'm, I'm like, I'm at REI all the time. And those people are really into that. And people here in Colorado are super focused on, um, on the spiritual. So it makes it a little bit easier. Um, to have the conversation. I, I mean, my hairdresser has my cards and, you know, my dentist has my cards because I've done TMJ and, you know, everyone's, everyone's like that. So, other questions? Um, do you keep in contact with a lot of your cohort or like, do you have a network that you kind of bounce ideas off of on occasion? Um, so we had a great cohort um, I'm in touch with a few people. I'm really in touch with probably right now more people um, who have been successful marketing from a spiritual aspect um, and a virtual aspect because in this environment I know that I need to build the virtual stuff that I do as well. Um, so I've kind of like focusing on both depending on probably the week. <laughs> um, so I'm really in touch with a lot of my, a lot of my Bali friends, um, people who are looking to live life in a higher vibration and manifest abundance. And that's kind of, you know, I feel like that's really important. Um, but also like Brian got me um, a, a part-time part -time job that I did for a while out here, uh, which was awesome. Um, I love my cohort. Um, I love my friends from Chicago. The hardest thing for me has been, 
being out here and having so many people that I care about being in Chicago. So a lot of the people that I'm still in touch with are my patients from Chicago um, and other friends, um, like I mentioned, Giselle Wasfi, we were in the hypnotherapy class together. So I would say that my, um, I think that uh, I'm, st I'm still friends with, um, with my friend, um, yeah, with a few of the people who are in my cohort, with my friend Abby, with my friend Sam, uh, I don't know if you guys know Sean Cisneros. He was probably ahead of all of your times, except for maybe Ryan, but Sean lives here. And so we forever are bouncing treatments off of each other. And um, I would say probably Sean is the person I speak to the most in general in my life right now, but also um, uh, we're constantly, you know, whenever he has a fertility person, he's like, so Jenny, what do you think about this? I'm like, this is great, but maybe I was playing four. So, you know, so we kind of have those conversations. Um, and then I'll like, I'm really bad at levator scap. And so I'll talk to him about, you know, some of the, the, the treatments that he does. He's working for a chiropractor right now. So he does a lot of, um, a lot of the uh, more musculoskeletal stuff. So. I'm not as exciting as Ryan because I don't have all those fun tools that he has, but I also am not going to drop 20 grand on a laser. So I'd, I'd rather go traveling. <laughs> okay, Joni, um, I guess, do you have any last bits of advice for us who are almost kind of close? I think a lot of us are kind of close to the end here. <laughs> um, stay the course. You guys practice a really powerful, amazing medicine. Um, really proud of all of you. And um, and just keep breaking the rules, man. Just keep breaking the rules. Be that person. Don't be afraid. Take a risk. That's all I got. Well, thank you, Joni, for joining us and talking Hi. with us. Pleasure. Really enjoy this. Thanks for um, having me. Yeah. And do you mind if I share your contact info? Not at all. That's totally cool. I put it in the chat, but if you want to just send it out to people, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll send out the recording and kind of just send your info as well. Okay. That's great. I don't know if this helped you guys, but I hope it did. If not, did. <laughs> let's have it. You're going to be great. Johnny, it was awesome. Thank you. So great to see your face, Christy. It's so good to see you too. I've been watching you, you know, I, 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 everybody here probably knows I stalk everyone on the social media. Yeah, if you're my friend, I get to see everything that you're doing. Yeah, but no, it has been, you've been doing a wonderful job too of that energy stores healing because I mean,